Just put the floor book, Bill. All right, everybody, we'll call, call the meeting to order. We're a little late getting started. Uh, it's 6.57. A roll call. Sandy? Sandy Slavin here. Donna Bronk here. Peter Dunlop here. Jim Gerberti here. We have minutes. Meeting on November 1st. I have reviewed the minutes and are comfortable with them. I'll then as of I Okay. I, then I make a motion that we accept them as, as, as submitted. Second? Second. I, I should say that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero one. GHD contract. Yeah. Sewer model. Which one are you doing first? Uh, the GHD one? The GHD one. The sewer modeling task one in this field one. This is to study the existing conditions for those three pump stations, correct? And all the and all the infrastructure connected to them, including the trailer parks flow, all of the industrial That exists parks. today. That's right. Those Only were, today. And everything that exists today to assess what the capacity is for the entire system. And the funds to be taken from the uh, funds given to us by Walmart. <coughs> and the Walmart account's holding a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So that's 2220 2000 $22,400. That's correct. Yeah. So what we'll page is that one? Can you give me Oh, in the back. No, a couple pages in there for the generic conditions. Yeah. Back one. Okay. This one? Yep. Right? yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I got Cindy, it. Cindy, do you have that fatal letter handy? Can I ask a question while we're on that? Guy, how many homes from uh, Great Hill Estates are tied in? Good question. Uh, 66 plus, we certified 12 is 88. Well, uh, this, this, this letter from Beta back a while ago <clears throat> said, uh, G Nine. Uh, the Great Hills Estate sewer expansion plan that goes connection to the remaining 156 homes. They said they had approximately 220 homes. So How many? They said they had approximately 220 homes. The number, so here's the reality. We don't know. We know that 66 homes were tied in years ago. Since then, we've had no record of tying in. Sometimes we think there's more flow. We're going to do some dye testing at one time, which we never did. So there's a lot of assumptions there. But we know for a fact that since we started the project, they've tied in 12 that I've certified. So I add 12 to 66, so that's going to be my number 88. Add whatever the number was, uh, so we have 130 left to go. And they guesstimate they have 220 homes. There's a couple lots that are blank. They'll probably want to fill those. Do you have a, a, a number that you use as what a, a, a trailer? We use 150,000, 150 gallons per day for retired community to, in the two bedroom homes. 150 gallons per day per unit. 150 gallons a day. That is correct. And there's at least 156 that are not connected. That is correct. Whoa. It's a flow. I think it was 22,000 gallons per day. So that flow we have yet to see. We've committed to that flow, but we have yet to see it. So when we do all our impact studies, we have to take that flow and maximize it. And then you ha also remember they also have to what they call peak flow it, and then they give you a number. So even though we're not there, we have to assume we're going to get there, and everybody else is going to get there. It's going to be part of that flow. So part of the study is going to find out exactly what our capacities of every one of those pipes are, and one of those pump stations are, and how close we are to them if we haven't exceeded them. 
So that will all be done with this report. That is correct. Okay. So, so we'll calculate peak capacity, expecting full build out of the 220 homes at Great Hills. Absolutely, we'll all complete build up. That's what we know of. Oh, that the, we know. Yes, the, 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 best, we know the best information we, we have. Can do. Then we can say what we can take, what we, right. and then we can see the impact on the stone path huh? once we know what we are drill. taking. Okay. No, we'll have a better, we'll have a, you know, a better idea of everything because it ties yep. in the entire because oh, spring water in the flow, so that will tie oh, everything in. So the only way we make the decision today, we can make the decision for the future. Yep. Retirement and, and also the twelve thousand gallons that we already gave to to the See, I thought Robinson he was getting a total of one hundred fifty gallons. You sure? That's why I just asked. One hundred fifty gallons per day per trailer. Per trailer, yeah. Right. Thank you, Peter. That, isn't that a lot? That's that's the. Uh, uh, it the, is when the you house. when you say that there's two hundred and twenty trailers up there. A regular house is two hundred twenty gallons a day for a two bedroom. A regular house is how many? Two hundred. One hundred and ten gallons per. So it's two hundred and ten gallons. If it's two bedroom, yes. it's two hundred and twenty gallons per day. Okay. So we do one hundred fifty gallons per day because they're retired. Yeah. So we assume they use a little less. Water. And they don't have kids. And they don't have kids, and you know, so they, that's what the, that's how they, they don't remember the show. Well, I wasn't going to say that. Um, well, that's how I've been cutting down. Um, Want to move down in part further, three? Closer in, to me? Yeah. In part three, um, item B, the build-out analysis of future flows. That's covered. Yes, it is. And will that also cover stone path? Well, they're there, they're already there, so it'll be included. So they'll be included. Yes, everything is going to be included. Everything that's existing and everything that's future that we know that we can build up. That'll include the gray home, which we know. If there's any unbillable or, or not built parcels or not rented parcels in the industrial park, they'll calculate that. They'll add those flows in. Well, at the end of the day, we're going to know what our capacity is for all our pump stations, all our infrastructures, if everything was done as we know it to be. Okay. All right, I make a motion that we... Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, when they do these pump stations, when they analyze them, mm -hmm. now I notice that this pump station, either one pump or two pump is on. But if one pump is, is overtaxed, two pump won't kick in. Um, uh, some of them will, some of them won't, and we get it, and then we'll figure out that. Well, I am that not one hundred percent sure. I am not one hundred percent sure with Kendrick. We, we have an alarm, high le wet level alarm, so if it doesn't catch up, they have a lag pump. So it, it, in theory, it does. We haven't seen. I haven't seen it yet. I After thought I just it. read someplace that we had two pumps running. They said that two pumps were running at the, one point. Now, actually, what happened is one pump kept running and never shut off. Right. It ran for five, because we just had, actually happened again Sunday, Sunday into Monday. With that the pump ran six hours straight, non-stop. That means that 60 minutes in the hour, it never stopped running. Never. It, that's just to keep up with the flow. Was that, that the pump, small one or the big one? Uh, I'm but not that's sure. the smaller pump. I believe it is. The bigger pump will probably, in that six hour, same six hour period, probably run three quarters of that time. But it still has to run. In other words, if that pump does three minutes, it'll do eight minutes. The other pump that does seven minutes will do 20 minutes. And the small would actually do 60 minutes. So we're trying to analyze all that because it's all new to us. We know that we're getting a lot of flow. We know we get I&I. &I, and we know that those pumps are running more than they have. We don't know why. We're trying to, we got to figure it out. We just don't know. But them pumps run like crazy. They've never run that much. Never. Well, sometimes I wonder if I'm getting flow that I'm not aware of because that pump runs straight. And especially peak time and off peak, that pump is running more than they ever run, so we don't know what's going on. We need to analyze it. I need to know. Why are there two different size pumps? The pump that I replaced, I asked for a maximum pump because that was because of the, of the pump stage, I mean, I'm sorry, of the trailer park, and we knew that they were, it was modular at best. So when I add a new pump, I try to get the absolute biggest I can put so in. So if, if we replace the other one, you'll do the same thing? When I get through, I will do the same thing. I will always ask the max I go because we knew going in that that pump station was modular at best for the existing flow of the trailer park, that build up, modular at best. Anything else I added there was going to tox that modular at best. So that's why I added the bigger pump. It's wouldn't for security it makes, for me. Wouldn't it make sense for GHD on their sewer modeling to base their modeling on both pumps of larger size? 
No, because we don't know what the other one can be. Care. Because remember, well, we don't. Because one, the bump we have on is a four-inch line. The other one's a three-inch line. So I'd have to figure out the three-inch line flow is because one of those lines is much, much smaller than the other. And with the four-inch pump is the one, the bigger pump's on the four-inch line. We don't know what to, we haven't even analyzed the three-inch line yet. So to put a, just put a bigger pump, it may not be able to get through. through so yeah. we have to do the calculus on that. We can't just arbitrarily say, we'll put it the same size on a three-inch. There's two, two size pumps on it. Matter of fact, the pump will always run less than pump two because it's a three-inch pipe. What do you mean? They put a three-inch out and a four-inch out. That was the design. They didn't put the same what do they What do they go to? They go to a manifold, which is, uh, I believe, six inches, and then it goes out to the rest. So you got three, three, meets a six, three and a four, meets a six, which is all, when you do the math, it's already greater than the six, and then it goes out to six. So there's a, lot of, there's a lot of friction loss, a lot of head pressure, a lot of things happening at that, at that manifold. So just to arbitrarily say I'll put a bigger pump is not the answer. We have to analyze it. We have How, to see what it can do. What's the distance between the pump and the, the manifold? About 80, uh, for the manifold, the pump, I would say probably seven feet. Eight feet, maybe. So a replace on the pipe wouldn't be a big deal. Uh, yeah, it is because it's very tight. The wet ones be, it'd be major. It goes through concrete. It's not. It's. We had to fix one. It was a major deal just to fix it to repair it. It's a major deal. That's antiquated design. That pump station is old, and so they used to just pour right through, pour right through concrete. So we can't even get in the vault. The vault's tough, tight to get in just to do any type of work at all. Even just to replace the check valves is a major deal because of the size of the vault. They're very small vaults, and they well, all how much land do we own around them? I'm sorry? I'm talking about the land that's inside the pump station. You've got yeah. a little vault that all this piping is in that you've got to climb in to get. What I'm getting at is expand the size of the vault. If we forget the vault, if we find out that it kind of, I'd rather expand the pumps, the, the wet well itself, give me more capacity. Exactly. Yeah, that's but that's mean. something, if we decide after we do all this analysis that we need bigger pump stations, then we have to put that on a capital plan and decide where to do it. Absolutely. That's the big picture. All right. That's, we knew going in, they built no, this one back ahead. then, so it may need to be bigger anyways to capacity what we're planning on doing. We don't know that. We have to figure that out. It's just not arbitrarily say do that. Okay, GHD. Does go I, well, sorry, does it make a difference if my name is spelled wrong? No, that was done on purpose. Oh, Sandra? That, that was just trying to see if you were playing. Oh, that, that's just a okay. Okay. That's okay. Then I, okay, I got to make a motion that we accept. The uh, the GHD uh, contract, I said, for South Shore, Shore. Uh, I have a bunch of questions. Uh, we have the South Shore generator, a preventive maintenance of generators. If I take a look, it says under Article 1, Scope of Work, Attachment A and Terms and Conditions contained in Attachment B and C. C is nothing but a list of the generators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What was it going to do? But is there a question? I can't find Kendrick on here. Because Kendrick's brand new and it's under a new contract. Because what happens, we just replaced Kendrick last year, that generator. And so they, they, when we do a contract, it's Kohler owns that now. Can we put Kohler's there? Kohler has a five year mainstream with that. It's okay. part of the contract. So the other so Kohler, con these Kohler generators we have, is not under that Kohler contract. The new, we just got, um, specs were just done for, I think it was Kendrick, I, my, my mind's what, Kendrick, I think we did um, Hill, Hill Street, and I believe we did Nanomit. Those three will not be in this contract. Why? Because when we, when we contract for generators, part of the contract includes a five-year maintenance program. So Kendrick Hill So Street a lot of generators are covered one way or the other. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. All, and we have a couple others that still have contracts left with ANSI, and we did the ANSI ones. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, um, all, all our generators are covered. And these are the ones that South Shore do specific. So that's why we So they it do out. it twice a year. Yes. A minor and then a major. Right. This twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty-five dollars, is that the total contract to do major and minor for every one of these twenty-five? That is correct. Total cost of the contract. But 25 generators for $12,000? Yeah. 
They think, actually, I thought it was kind of expensive. It's yeah, been, I do it's too. Been, it's been going up over the years. Yeah. I remember I was getting it for eight, nine. It, every year I, it goes up. I, I, I just have a question. Um, do do we have a PM program with where we, you know, we test two? I mean, I, I so, understand you have yes. a contract, but the, do you have a written a monthly, PM program and? When it is when it is performed and who performs it? We perform monthly run times on the channel. We run them every month. We put them on the road okay. to make sure that they're Second running up temperature and make sure that there's active gensets. So we go in, then we just shut the station off, take all the power away, line power, shut it off. Generator kicks on, and then we let it run for half a day. Daddy, you do that from the plant. You can do that from the no, plant. Or you have to go out there. We send a guy out to the field to do it. Yes, and so we do so many per, uh, per month. So many. Are per you month. sure they're doing it? Uh, yes, because we see them running. I, they'll, they come in a lot, generator running. We, they're a lot. It'll lot at the plants that generator running. That's right. right. Sometimes we forget to put the foolish things on. One day I put it off. It ran all night and met a poison. The neighbor calls it. Hey, the generator's still running. Uh, just 25. So we are doing it. Okay. Yeah, doing it, but we, don't, we just check the oil and check the oil. We don't do the actual oil changes, filter oh, no, changes, I'm all wait, that wait. stuff. I hear a compass. I can't. I don't know whether or not your compensation is dealing with the contract. Is it? Can you wait until the guy gets... Okay, my, my, my only question is, are we doing what we can to... Because... Mm -hmm. We are. Okay. We are. This is a and is it a written policy that you have, a part of your policies and procedures? Of, your, your, in your PM program? We actually give a work order to mm -hmm. do the generators. Okay. It's, it's part of a big... It's, it's, a, it's a computerized program. Yeah. And it, all the maintenance throughout the pump station and the plant that has to be done, mm -hmm. it generates uh, weekly work orders. Okay. Work orders are handed out, they're completed, they're written up, they're brought back, we enter the work, the work done, and we tell it to spit out the next, the next month's spit out the work. I, I, so I, and I, I do understand what, you, what you're saying, but just, just follow me for a second, okay? Yep. I used to have a book, and I would have what, what things had to be done weekly, what, what things had to be done daily, which things had to be done monthly, mm -hmm. every six months. Do, is that what you guys do? You have something like that? Yes, we have like a that. computer program. We okay. pay $5,000 a year for a program, and we feed this program all the information. We pay for the program, and then we, we feed everything into yeah. it. Yeah, and the program, what the program does is spit all these things out. Okay. And actually remind you, so I can't forget. If I forget to enter into my book or change yep. my book, I have trouble. The computer doesn't forget. Okay. It just spits out, spits out, spits out. Yes. Okay, so that what was, you're saying, we actually question. do by computers. Okay. That was my question. And at the pump station, if you go, it's, there's a logbook. In that logbook, they actually manually enter what they did at that pump station. So we'll give them a work order. We'll get that work order back. And to replicate that, uh, for backup, you can go to the pump station. There's a, a logbook mm -hmm. that they write, ran pump generated today. And, okay. And they I don't want to buy an energy company. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what we've been talking okay. about. In oh, Article 3, oh, contract yeah. sum, it says... Um, to renewal acknowledgement on attachment D, I couldn't find an attachment D any place. No, I can't either. I, I don't know what the attachment is. It may be, our contracts always have an automatic renewal on them. Or well, the, there's right? this letter from South Shore Generator Service and Sales. Mm -hmm. talks about maintenance contract, but it isn't titled attachment D. So I thought maybe probably that yes, was it. That could probably be it, because okay. the letter that's saying that they want, they want to exercise the right, and we exercise the right. Now, of these, yes. you're seeing of these of these generators. There's 25 listed here. We have some under an, on two different other contracts. Yes, one is with the coal because they're three. Yeah, new you ones. said the five-year one new ones. Yes, one was ANSI, who, who had the three before that. Okay. So between the three companies, all of our generators are covered, are covered by a maintenance contract. That's correct. Is there any way? Is there any way of knowing which one of these generators are near their end of life? We've been replacing for a year, so we do it the worst, and we, we, I think we got three more left to do of the that, old met, that met that criteria. That's on this and, list. Uh, yes, that met the. So it will criteria. be removed from this list, and if they're a coal, it will go to the coal. Go to the coal list, or whoever yeah, wants or to stay this, here. Or stay here, whatever the case okay. may be. But usually, when we do a contract, we do a five-year maintenance agreement that's written into the contract. So that company that, that gives us that generators we buy them from who wins the contract when it goes up the bid, they get that five year period. And then eventually it'll come back to the main list and we bid it all out. Thank you. Those were the only questions I had on the contract. 
The only question I've got on this guy is, mm -hmm. this is November 15th, and this contract began on the 1st of July. How come it's so late in getting to us? I have no idea. I think what happened is they, they thought because it automatically renewed, we still have to do the paperwork, and there was a glitch in the paperwork itself because the contract automatically renews, we agree to it, and they figured that's how it's going to carry over. We did our research, is no, no, we got to actually do another contract. Okay. Theoretically, without this contract, how could accounting pay the bill? Well, be, they said the bill's the twice a year. Maybe it hasn't come out yet for the second half the, of the year, um, first half of the year. It could be. And I think when you read the original contract, it says it renews. Sometimes we believe it's automatic, but it's not as automatic as we think it is. Okay. There has to be an agreement between the two parties saying, yes, we will renew it. So it doesn't, it's not automatic per se. So we find like that. Do I have a motion? That's our issue. Aye. So is it a year from now or a year from then? Probably a year from July. It goes July to, it shows to July 1. Yeah. July 1 to July 30th. June 30th. Yeah. Yep. Well, so I make a motion that we accept South Shore Generator. Second. Contract and the amount of $12,855. dollars mm -hmm. i got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Four zero zero. Guy, you're on the stage. I am uh, <clears throat> waiting for the uh, the bids. The, uh, we had a meeting yesterday, Wednesday. Today's Thursday, Wednesday. Uh, we had eight people come to the meeting um, on the list to bid the project. You mean um, Swiss Beach? Swiss Beach uh, <coughs> through the Marsh. So they they all have the specs and everything that they need to have. There was some concern and questions on our needing uh, aquatic safe or environmental safe, and we said we're not going to back down our, our request of that because of the sensitivity of the area. Um, so I believe the bids are due, I want to say November 28th, I think it is, and that's when the bids will be in. Uh, then we'll review them all, make a decision, and get going uh, on the sewer, on the uh, lighting project. So we're closer than we have ever have been, but yeah. Probably two weeks away from the bid, and then it's spent in the bid, spent all the paperwork, and that takes a little bit, and then awarding the bid. So that's where we are with the, with the project uh, on, on that one. Is weather going to uh, tie this up? We're hoping not, because some of it can be done. Actually, the cold weather we're hoping will benefit us as we go through the wetland, if you will, the marsh area, yeah. because it'll be more stable ground, and that's what we're uh, betting on. Sometimes in the wintertime, it, it looks like. You live on the ocean sometimes. That's how high the water comes up there. Okay. It really does. So we we'll yeah, it freezes and stays. Yeah. Because yeah. we're hoping that the, the solid is the ground. When you we say, have to just pull pipe and stuff, so we want it solid. Yeah. When you say you had eight people coming, are you talking about for the entire contract, or are you talking just getting the land clear? Eight people coming for the contract, for the outcome of the contract. For the lining. For the lining project. For the lining part of it. Yes. Yes, that's the main, that's the con that's the thick well, book. Contract the specs. How can how can we expect them to bid it if if they can't see it yet? See what? They can't see the land. They're going to have to trudge through. The a lot of the contractors walked it on their own, but at the at the walkthrough yesterday, we gave everybody the option to walk with us, and most of them said, "No, we're good. We already walked it." So uh, that's all I can do. I can't. Really, there's just them. one section right behind Donna's house. Slowly to a section close to the track that you can't walk. Everything else is cleared. Cleared, walk it, you can drive it. It's very, very So open. it's just the point between two manhole covers that you can't see. So that's the only part that's being held up with the brush clearing? That's it. That's the brush clearing. No, the only reason why we need to clear the brush is so they can pull bypass pipe through. They can still light it. They'll, if they didn't have to pull bypass, they'd line it anyways, but we need to pull bypass pull through yeah, there. Okay. So that's so, all we need it for, so, so we're trying to get that cleared. So there's just one section that has to be brush cleared? About 800 feet, yes. By maybe 800, yes, absolutely. And the trees have been taken care of out of the other sections? The other sections have no trees. So this is this section it has both brush. trees and brush? It has everything. It's overgrown like crazy. Is it on the so we can't proceed until this is done. 
we're going to do, we're actually, we're getting quotes now. We're having a hard time finding people. We got one guy that will definitely do it. I got to find more people because I got to quote it. I can't just take one price. I have to have people quote it. I got another guy that said he possibly can quote it, but it's really not his forte because it becomes land clearing. I bought every local tree cutter and they won't touch it. I've got two land clearers. One may touch it and one definitely will touch it. So I'm looking for one more land clearer so I can get three quotes. Because I have to, by law, I have to have three quotes. Or at least okay. three people I send quotes to. I don't have to, they all have to quote, I can, get, I can get one quote back. I have to send it to three quotes, and they all have to be specified exact. And what it is, is land clearing. When I walk with our local, we have a guy locally, Pontiac Tree, that's all our cutting. He's the first guy we walked it with, and he just said, oh my goodness, you, you can't cut this. You need a land clearer because of the brush in the trees. It's, and you got to skid in there, skid out there, pull things in, pull things out. It's, it's much bigger than I thought. And I conservation will let you do it. They wouldn't let me clear anything. Yeah, well, this is the, only because we have a pipe over it, and we have an okay. easement established. We have a 25-foot easement established, mm -hmm. and we're only clearing our easement, and technically the easement we should have been maintaining, mm -hmm. because it should never overgrow. So mm -hmm. the day we got that easement, our responsibility is to walk that easement annually and make sure that it's, it's still where it is, and people, mm -hmm. especially if somebody's doing something on it, telling, hey, listen, that's our easement, yeah. and it never overgrows. But yeah. we've neglected things like that for years, and so they're all overgrown, all okay. overgrown. And when we do the minor forest one, that, that, that when they build those condos they want to tap into the force main when it goes down towards the river, I'm going to ask them to clear that so I can maintain it after we get done. This comes back to why can't we use municipal maintenance? Yeah. They can't do it. Uh, yeah, I asked them, they can't, they're overwhelmed by it. They don't have the equipment. They don't have, oh. It's not just chainsaws and bus whackers. It's, it's, I yeah. guess it's land clearers. Yeah, they've got that thing hooked up to a backhoe that they go down along the sidewalk and clear 20 feet off the side. And so the, you got these huge eight inch trees, some brush, eight inch trees, some brush. You, so how do you get in between it just to drive out there? Plus the land goes like this. And we got to push all that. This is, it's, you should, I'll walk it with you. You tell me after you walk it, which if you think meeting the middle make, I walked it with Dave Menard. Walk it and then you tell me what you think, how we can do it. I'll take all the suggestions I can get. If you got a better way, I will take it. Trust me. I'm looking to save money and get it done. If you have, I mean it sincerely. Walk it. I'll walk it with you. Send you it, give me some suggestions. Send a D8 down there and then we'll be flat. I would have, but I'm worried about the pipe because I got all these trees. And if I stop pulling trees and those roots are in the pipe, I worry about the pipe. And once that pipe goes, I'm in serious trouble. I gotta, and that pipe, it shows down five feet, but the land does this because when the school was putting that stuff back there, I may have less top than I think. So I've got to be very, very careful. I got to tread lightly. If I destroy that pipe, I can't even line it then. We go through all of this trouble to get the money, and now we're held up by some goddamn... Brush. No, that's not true. Mm -hmm. Once the contract's through, we'll have that cleared. We'll figure it out. That's not true at all. I mean, the problem is, is that we got to do it, but the real problem is, is we get the bids in, then we got to negotiate and all that. We're still... We can get a bid of tomorrow accepted. I, it's how long is it going to get a contract written? It may take weeks. The process is so layered, it may take weeks to get it done. Just to get it out of the lawyer's office is probably a week to ten days in itself. So yeah, that one side, this is the easy part. The hard part is getting it through the, getting it signed. That's the hard part. But I, I'm an optimistic kind of guy. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. One way or the other. We'll get it done. Absolutely. The, uh, we did the, we did the um, assessment of 10 feet of the uh, force main today, the 18 inch, we'll do the rest of it tomorrow at the vault. Preliminary looks like that pipe has lost 50% of its material. Um, that's, a, that's an average of what we're seeing on the scan. He's got to actually take three weeks to get the full report. Some may be a little less, some may be. Uh, it, it's, so the pipe's 4.40, and we see some areas of 2.1. Uh, so that's about half of the pipe gone. So the question becomes is if it took 47 years to get rid of half of that pipe, what's it going to take to get rid of the other before it's too thin to get supported? So, it'll be, it, so that's the question we've got to make. But in three weeks, we get the actual report back, recommendations, the whole lot. Yeah, but what we saw today on the scan, the electrical scan, it's about 50% wear on the crack. The bottom has probably three quarters. It's really not that bad in the bottom. The bottom is a couple spots, but the top, the crown, is about 50%. So we'll, we'll finish assessing it. We'll do the one down below for comparison because that should be better. We'll get a really good comparison and we can sit and make a decision as to where that should be on our list of priorities. So that we'll have that answer in about three weeks, but what we're seeing is about 50%.
That's all I really have. Just, I really didn't have time to prepare. I apologize. I mean, just some kind of crazy things, but well, I shouldn't call it crazy things. But. Now, did they flood that hole back in, or is that just covered over for the time being? We filled it. We put. Um, it's, it was really weird because there was a lot of big rocks and boulders in it. Yeah. I don't know how they put them on the pipe. It scared us. We pull it all out. We put back crushed stone underneath the pipe and flush with the pipe. And we took gravel with a hole without the rocks in it, a nice good gravel, put that in three feet. In the top three feet, we put flowable fill. And then we played it so the flowable fill can set up. And once the flowable fill sets up, we may leave it till Monday, it'll get nice and hard. Then we'll put asphalt on the top of it, button it up and be done with it. We can still get asphalt this time of the year? Yeah, so they can. So what it's, we got right now is we plated it. We plated it, so. Once we do all of these other pipes yeah, and bring up all that pressure, yeah, that pipe is only 50% capacity. No, 50% where? In other words, 50% yeah. of that pipe. So you got, let's say you have a four inch wall, <coughs> now it's a two inch wall. That's yeah, all but, saying, but when, so. we, when we fix everything all the way down to it, we're going to give it additional pressure. The pressure is always by the pump. I don't care how much you put to it, the pump only generates so much pressure. It's how often it runs, it becomes runtime. And there's a point where runtime gets exceeds runtime, which is bad for the Is this a case where pressure will increase? It, what, what, what is the composition of this pipe? It's it's um, ductile iron. So it's steel. Yeah. So it's not like they, a concrete pipe that's half eaten through. It's a whole different ballgame because concrete pipes are exponential. They, they once you get past the concrete into the, into the yeah, iron, it just it just go it'll go faster. Very, very fast. It's not the same with the steel pipe. And so I'll get the manufacturer to give us actual analysis as to what the life expectancy is of that pipe, given the fifty percent wear. So I can know for sure. How much additional do you expect to the new school? Of what? On that pipe, will the new school connect? That's a force main, so it can't connect to it. It's, it will connect. So right now we have a pump station we'll, connected to it for the school right now. Okay, and it, what we have for pump station will be able to handle the new school? I have no idea. I'm waiting for those calcs. Okay. And matter of fact, the school is responsible for a pump station in part of the, the when I sat with them. So we'll figure out what that is. Because I, I, I made a matter of fact, before we did all this in school, I said to them that they need us to put a bigger size connection to it because we're, we're, we're digging it up now. And they said, no, we should be fine. So, <clears throat> so hopefully they're, they're correct. But they're responsible for the pump station to the school. The other question is, is the guy across the street, he wants to build another whole building. Yeah, he's putting another building in. Well, I asked him, how are you going to connect that to so I haven't got an answer yet. Probably through his existing building. Well, the, uh, build, the existing building is pretty maxed out because we have a certain line, a pump in there, a pipe in there. We also have an MDC trap. So that's, and we had to lower the pump station to accommodate that. So we're not accommodating new building. I mentioned that to them and, you know, hmm. they, they're forewarned. So when they get to that point, it's on them. What about the new homes that are going to be built on Mine and Ave opposite Brandy Hill? They're going to tap in below. They've already been pushed to tap okay. in. So when the pipe goes down, they're going to tap in there. And when they tap in, they're going to cut us a clip once. So we can analyze that. We already have a good announcement. We'll do that again for backup. And then they're going to clear that whole easement down to the river. So yeah, that, that's, that's already, we already made provision for that. We already gave them permission to do that. There's, I think it's three buildings going in. Go ahead. Have we seen the, oh, I'm, I'm changing the subject to um, Dakota. Have we seen the final Zoning Board of Appeals document permitting that structure to see whether or not we still have what we requested for sewer? I, I believe, um, have I, you I, seen I believe anything? I skimmed it. I think an email from uh, Ken that verified we got everything we asked for. I believe it was, okay. a, it was a quick So a lot of hours. other stuff was dropped, but you think we got what we, we got asked everything for? everything we asked pump, for. Pump. Our, um, Everything. Grinders and Matter of okay. fact, he called me to verify it before they finalized okay. it. Everything we asked for, we just wanted we got. to make sure because yeah. everything else seemed to be dropped. A yeah, lot of we, other stuff was dropped. Yeah, we, we verified it the day before okay. the finalization, the meeting with approval. Sorry, I, I just wanted to. No problem. So we were pretty adamant about it. Have anything else, guy? I'm done. Okay. I, I apologize, but I'm done. I got. To, you, Right, okay, unfinished business. Our sump pump policy is still in. Table that because uh, Max kind of taking the lead on that. Yep. 
Okay. Stone Path, a letter was sent to Beta. Mm -hmm. uh, Beta responded. So we sent that letter to everybody. We haven't followed up yet or anything else. So that's what we have of it. Okay. Okay, the home's not connected to sewer. Uh, after Thanksgiving, I'll get a chance uh, to meet with Leo on that. He's been tied up, so I haven't been able to get together with him. With who? Leo. Mr. Bowen. Bowen. Um, what, to see what we can do? Yeah. Ability we have. And whether or not we can have a meeting with. So it would seem to me. It would seem yeah. to me that conservation should be taking the lead on that. What? Well, how's it not? How, how can we force them to connect if if somebody isn't enforcing someone's Title got, Five? No, someone's got a valid sewer a septic system. We can't say you've got to replace your Title Five. It's the sewer policy that says you got five years to replace it. Nothing to do with conservation. There's nothing in our bylaws that say a Title V must be replaced X days after sewer line goes through. That's that, a town bylaw. That, yeah, that would be fair. One year way. after sewer goes through. That's Actually, not a conservation. No, it's not. No. It's, a, it's a town no. bylaw. So when we put sewer in front of your road, we give you a letter to get one year to tie in. You choose to or do it. Or five years so it is up, Title V. It, it is up to us to enforce it? Well, so the bylaw is very specific about penalties and fines, but I, I believe before we do anything, it's just to run it by town council again, just to assure us, because if we have a legal problem and we don't consult them, we may not get the best defense. So you can look at it and tell us, okay, here's your roadblocks, here's what you can do, here's your, you know, just to get good, solid opinion from town council would be the okay. best move before we do anything. Okay. Uh, EDU rates, tie and bond. Where are we? I haven't, I, I, I haven't heard from Mike in a week. I, Mike was supposed to get back from last week. I was away, I, I, and, and uh, today I did this. Yesterday I did, uh, I was away until yesterday at 11.30. I left uh, Sunday, I was away at 11.30. I haven't talked to Mike, so I, I'll let me follow up on it. Which, the last thing I knew is we're setting a meeting for the 29th for him to be here. I think it was the 29th of November for him to be here for the meeting. That's the last thing I so you can ask questions directly. That's the last I know, so I'll verify that. Because at this point, I want Mike to sit in front of the board because <coughs> for me to relay the information that I'm getting makes no sense. And he's, he's finalizing what he has to give you all the options, then we can debate it here uh, and then figure out where we want to go. All right. That makes sense to me. Okay, I think I've got a, a couple of things. Right New business. Uh, first thing is. Uh, like to get a vote just to in the bills? Get, no, just to get it on file. Who's authorized to sign? But authorized to sign. That uh, at this point the chairman's authorized to sign, and I need authorization to appoint someone if I'm unavailable. But that's a yeah. You should definitely should have something. But I just need to have it as a, as a <coughs> motion and a vote. All right, I make a motion that we have a. Uh, uh, an, an, an alternate to sign uh, the water pollution uh, control facility bills. If does that include the vice chair and the chairman? Yeah, I mean, this so. includes the board. I'll pick who at that point. If I can't make it Friday, yeah, I'll we'll pick someone. I will contact someone to do it. Why can't we just? Um, why can't we just? Well. Uh, why can't we just vote on somebody to to do it when you can't do it? Because that Jimmy has to be able to say, how does that person know whether or not Jimmy's available or not? No, that well, my my point would be, you know, God forbid something happens, you well, you've guess, got a backup right, that can do it. My only the only reason I was looking at it, doing this because I'm gonna you're gonna be the alternate. Okay, you're in Florida, and this happens to be a week I can't make it. Exactly. What do I do now? What do they do now? Well, who goes the, in? Now? Well, it makes to me it makes sense yeah. to have more than one person. Well, that's uh, what I'm maybe, saying. Maybe you have three people. And that's what I'm saying. Well, that's, that, what, that's, that's what he's saying. I'm saying it's the oh, board. I missed it. I missed it. All right. I'm so sorry. Jimmy is. He's Jim, just I'm saying sorry. he'll We're, pick one. 
which of the three people uh, each time. I so, got you. So all you. members available over here, there's a call. Hey, Pete, right. no, I'm out of town. Yeah. Hey, daughter, no, I'm out of town. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're here. Okay, All right, I understand. I'm so sorry. everybody has a right. I'm yeah. sorry. When he's unavailable. I make a motion that Jimmy Jaberti, Jim Jaberti signs invoices and designate a backup as needed from the board. Second. All the commissioners. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I believe this was a head cut of it. FYI. Uh, he was kind enough to find. Did you still have one? I have it back over here someplace. A. Did you sign these? Uh, no, I'm just going to use these for you. I didn't give it back to you, did I? No. Yeah. The uh, South Carolina. Oh, that. Did you give that back? Uh, of course I did. That's so. we go. Uh, <clears throat> this is the thing Peter found and gave me from Charleston, South Carolina. They have got a problem that we face and uh, with the flushables or non flushables as we are interested in. And the bottom line uh, on it is, according to this little article, uh, push to remind people the flushable wipes often aren't flushable has helped some in the past few years. Charleston Water System told the Post, the employees have found better ways to keep the balls of used wipes from clogging pipes and pumps. What that is, that doesn't go into it, but it does say that they have found it. That may or may not be a fact. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. As I, last meeting I had with the EPA, no one has any answers, specific answers that will solve the problem. We have a lot of ideas. I don't think that this solves the problem. I think this kind of mitigates yeah. some of the problem, from the, at least the way I read it. And I went on their, their website, and their website was kind of interesting, uh, you know, because they do have, actually have a, a uh, one page of it just on what not to flush, and it mm -hmm. spells out specifically what not to, including medicines. We have a video that does yeah. the same thing. So yeah. if we go on the so, uh, you can look at the video. It actually, it's I, kind of cute. But yes, absolutely. It's but, been a major uh, I thought there. it might be worth a phone call down there. Doesn't hurt. To them just to see what, they, what their interpretation of uh, better ways to keep the thing. It may be something we're already doing, it may be something we already know, it may be something doesn't hurt. we're not even thinking no. of. So. Doesn't, it doesn't hurt. I know we're asking everybody, it's, right now in Washington, D.C., we're trying to get the Congress to change the laws so we have more input as to the manufacturer. Because we can say anything we want, the manufacturer keeps manufacturing. We're asking them not, we're not asking, because it's getting, the bamboo is starting to come into play more, more than ever because people don't want things to dissolve, they want to keep using it, especially any type of wipes. You know, we don't just have baby wipes here, we have wipes for tables, we have adult wipes, there's wipes everywhere. And so we're trying to get them to make them dissolvable like toilet paper, but they say it wouldn't stand up, it's really hard. I think it would but, help uh, if we could just get the word flushable off the, their labels. It, that's what we try. As a matter of fact, if you look at, some of the labels have flushable, non-flushable, they put a line through flushable, but they hide on little flaps and they're this big. So they've answered some of the congressional uh, requests, but they haven't got the full requests. When you're talking about Kimberly Park and some of these corporations that are multi-billion dollar corporations, you're trying to convince them to stop selling their product because that's what it's going to do and that's their mindset. So they have profits to worry about, so it's a hard fight. Now it's to educate the public, generally speaking, and then it's how do you get the pumps? Is they're making pumps like crazy now to start shredding, and they're making baskets to catch. But yeah, and whatever they're doing, I'd be more than that interested in finding out. I, I have no because, idea what it is. Yeah. Okay. In Maine, they go after businesses. They go after nursing homes and businesses. Um, and they actually have a way of identifying it. Don't ask me how. They just go upstream and see where it is, and they get the pump station, they eliminate it, and say it's you, and they'll find the business. So yeah. everybody has a way of doing it and trying to solve it. I appreciate it. Because it is a major, major, major issue. I had a friend in New York City with Kitty. 
This where all the litter went. Absolutely. Oh, that, that's what, and that doesn't stop. Because the human nature is to it, it, it's Take just the easy to get way rid out. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. get rid of it. It's out of sight, out of mind. And we don't think of the long-term repercussions. Every time you do something, you affect many, many. And we don't think of that. We just think of it visually. So this is the same problem. But they just flush it. Is it, oh, is it they time? They just flush it. Not yet. Uh, no? Not quite. I'm, 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 the I'm, revenue oh, budget I'm, versus actual report, it said... FY18, for the same period, we had $250,000 from Bourne, but I don't see anything this year. Will that be coming soon? I, I hope. What was it for? Their partial share? The yeah, Bourne pays quarterly bills. And they pay okay, so it share. just hasn't shown up yet Bourne as revenue? Okay. It hasn't hit yet. Well, they haven't sent the check yet. I don't know. Yeah. It's in the mail. Yeah, checks in the mail. I, I had a... Just one question on that. On the grease thing, it was down four percent. The cost. The no, they say uh, revenue. I don't. I don't buy it. Our numbers are up. So I don't. This remember. This is I, as I understand it. Before it's booked, it's behind because they don't report it till they book it. And so it may. Let's say I'm down four percent in in August. Yeah. And here we are, in November. It'll show four percent until we book another set of numbers to change that. So because we should be down a lot more than that, right? With Shouldn't we, or should we not be? I'm hoping our revenues are greater than it was last year's projection. I'm, I'm always hoping revenues are greater than projected. But I think we, I think our grease should be a little higher than we projected. I think probably like eighty, ninety thousand dollars more than we uh -huh. projected. Oh, I, before we go too far, I, 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 I was going to uh, <coughs> mention at the last meeting. Uh, Mill Pond, I spoke with them. He expects to have that situation finalized by the end of the year. He has a problem. He wants to tie the sewer. I have no problem with it. But it takes an easement. I went and sat with Mr. ZD. He wants to tie into the Elm Street Force Main. Okay. He can't cross that street into the into the Force Main without an easement from the town. It takes a town meeting vote. I said this to him a year ago. I said, I, I, said, I said, just get an easement. Whether you exercise it today or tomorrow, have it in place is important. Because when you do want to exercise it, you can go ahead. So he can make all the plans he wants, And because I met his contractor. And I says he can't tap into that pipe without an easement. And that takes a town meeting vote. We already explained that to him. So he can't do it until after April town meeting. And at that time, he should have an article. He should have it on the board. He's got to write an article. He's got to do a set of plans, talk about the easement, the whole nine yards, and then it gets to the town hall. Absolutely. I said to his contractor, please remind me of that, because I already had this conversation with him. So he needs that in order to cross the town road? Not only the town road. I'm not worried about the road, but yes, he needs an easement for that pipe to go across our property on Elm Street, the town's property off the road, and then tie into the town's property, which is the pipe. So you need what easement. town property is between Mills Pond and the, the sewer well, line? So if you look, so I'm trying to think. So what? you got Elm Street. Yeah. All the land here. This is Tremont Nail. Uh -huh. Now Force Main's over here. So he's got we, this property there. We own that property. He's got we to cross own that. Tremont Nail. Yes, and so that's the have, property. So he has on. to cross Tremont Nail. Absolutely, to get oh, to that okay. Force Main. And he can't touch the Force Main without an easement. Because every place he puts a pipe, he has to have a right to maintain it. That takes an easement. And he's going across town. So what, and he should move forward with that. Just to have it in place. Yeah. Didn't realize that. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. I think that's about it. Um, the next meeting is the 29th. Mm -hmm. And it will be in this room, our following meeting. Mm -hmm. On the 13th, we'll be on the other side of the street, back in our old haunts for that meeting. Okay. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.